but we are back with our video sit downs with the candidates and we are going to turn our attention to the Mason County Auditor's position. Man across the table from me is Patty McGuire. He's running unopposed, but he's new to the community. Yep. And I just wanted to bring it in, bring him in and let's find out about Mr. McGuire. Smooth Thanks, Diedrich. Nice to be here. <laughs> so uh, tell us all about you and why you decided to run. So I'm an Olympia boy originally. Um, but when I was 10 years old, my folks got divorced. My mom had a sense of adventure. We moved to Seattle and then moved to Juneau, Alaska, where I mostly grew up, went to high school there, went east to college, uh, went back to Juneau, uh, did, got involved in politics there, um, and got a taste for it, worked, um, helped elect a, a governor up there, helped elect a, ran the the campaign for lieutenant governor um, back when Alaska was a democratic state, um, which was a while ago. Uh, and then had an opportunity in the late 80s to go to Oregon uh, to run the state democratic party there. I did that for four years and then uh, went to work for uh, governor from Arkansas who was running for president, Bill Clinton, uh, ran, ran his campaign in Oregon in 1992 and then went to work for the administration uh, and for the Department of the Interior in Washington, D.C. for uh, Bruce Babbitt, uh, who was Secretary of the Interior. It was a great experience. Came back to Oregon in 96, ran the reelect, went back to Interior, uh, and then moved over to the uh, Department of Energy, the Bonneville Power Administration, which brought me back to the Northwest, lived in Portland uh, from uh, 99 until 2010. Um, I became Deputy Secretary of State in Oregon, which sort of set me on this course of being involved in elections. Most people in elections sort of stumble into this. No, no, nobody grows up wanting to be an elections yeah, geek, right, um, yeah. but, uh, and I, I stumbled into it through a connection and, and a job uh, and oversaw elections in Oregon, uh, oversaw the first vote by mail uh, general election in American history um, in 2000, uh, and then built a, a uh, centralized voter registration database. Uh, the biggest IT project in uh, Oregon history to be done on time and on budget, um, something that may never be broken, at least in the on budget <laughs> part. <laughs> um, and um, and sort of you know, got, fell in love with the elections business. Uh, later went out, worked for a private company for a couple of years, and then had an opportunity to go to DC again and work for the Federal Voting Assistance Program, which is part of the Department of Defense that works to make sure that service people and their families and citizens living overseas get to vote wherever they are in the world. I was deputy director of this program and the liaison to 7,300 local election jurisdictions, Mason County being one. I got to know Karen Her in that job, um, and you know she she had a had and has a national reputation as a real innovator and um, and, a, and just a rock solid. Um, election official uh, was a I, I was at uh, DOD almost five years and um, through a strange series of events ended up buying a house on Harstein Island um, and that we were gonna rent for two years and then move out here but after six months um, we the the pull of the Northwest was too much and and I got a job where I could literally work anywhere in the world. Um, and we came to Mason County. Uh, that was in 2010. Uh, I've been in the elections business on the private side. Uh, about a year ago, I uh, left my job and started consulting, uh, work for a number of nonprofit organizations, the Democracy Fund, uh, the eBay guy, uh, the guy who started eBay, uh, established this nonprofit to improve democracy. I work also for the uh, Military Officers Association of America on a contractual basis, um, looking at why military spouses don't vote. Hmm. Um, so last fall, uh, when Karen started telling people 
that she wasn't going to run. I had a conversation with her, and, um, and she told me nobody in the office was planning to run and encouraged me to look at it, and I did. And so at 59 years old, I'm running for office for the first time in my life, um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, I, I think the exciting thing to me is to be able to work in elections at the retail level. You know, I've sort of done it at the 30,000 foot level at the federal government and the 10,000 foot level at state government, but this is on the ground and helping actual voters and, and I really love that and, and I'm looking forward to the opportunity to do that here in Mason County. So obviously your background is in elections, but there are other aspects to the auditor's office. What do you know about those aspects, recording and I'm missing somebody at licensing. Recording, licensing, and then financial services right. for the financial, county. Yeah, okay. So I know. See, I, I, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, so, um, I mean, on the financial services side, uh, when I was Deputy Secretary of State, in Oregon, that office is constitutionally separate from the, the rest of state government. I mean, almost like the judiciary. And so, you know, we had our own uh, business uh, services office that paid our bills and and it, it was a, a 37 million dollar uh, agency 200 employees so kind of the same size as Mason County um, you know they're in the same league and so you know we did payroll we did all that sort of thing so you know I've done that um, on the licensing side uh, in the Secretary of State's office we did registry of uh, corporations so you know, we had websites to, uh, to do that. We had a, a counter where people could come in, uh, talked a lot about customer service and, and focusing on that. Um, so you know, I'm very customer service okay. focused and, and want to bring that ethic to uh, the auditor's office. OK. Um, this is, we're talking about departments the licensing aspect, I know you have the uh, sub-agency of Mountain View right. Licensing and I hear that the owners are going to retire and basically close that franchise, I believe is what they call it. Yeah. Um, and I, I heard Karen talk about that at a meeting. Do you have any thoughts on how to proceed with that process or is she going to get that done before she's out of office or do you even know? I don't know their exact timing of how that's going to work. I think you know it, it is an opportunity for another uh, company to, to step up and and get that franchise. Um, you know it's it's a good business opportunity it's um, you know it, and it's my understanding that it is dependent upon the Mason County Auditor's Office continuing to do that job that there is a sub-agency right. in the county. I mean, I, during the last round of budget cuts, there was some discussion about getting the Auditor's Office out of that business because it's really the only thing they do that's optional. Mm -hmm. Everything else is statutorily required. That's an optional thing, but uh, A, it makes money for the county. I mean, it, it, it is a net revenue generator, those employees bring in more money than they cost the county, and it allows a private business to uh, be in that business that if the county got out of the that business, it's my understanding that they'd have to shut down too. Hmm. So it would be not only a loss of public jobs, but a loss of private jobs, and that's just a bad deal. And, the, and happily, the commissioners uh, figured that out and restored the money so that licensing could continue as a function in the auditor's office. Let's move to the elections. I mean, I'm, I'm way off of my sheet that I provided <laughs> you, but um, vote by mail is, I, I think, we, it makes it really easy for Absolutely. somebody to vote. You can register to vote. I mean, it's really simple to do these mm -hmm. things. Now you're talking about the state providing uh, postage. Return postage, yes. Right. Um, I just want your thoughts on that, because I don't see that if somebody has a hard time getting a stamp, if they had to go to a poll, would they be able to get to a poll? Well, it, I mean, my, my daughter's 29, and um, you know, she's sort of my focus group on that generation. Right. Uh, you know, I can tell you, uh, when we were living in D.C., she was there too, and was still voting in Oregon. Um, 
a 29 year old or 26 year old finding a stamp you know it's just not part of their world um, you know it it's different for people my age um, sure you know I got a pile of stamps at home but uh, for young people you know having to physically mail something having to fill out a paper ballot stick it in an envelope have a signature you know it's it's there just aren't that many things that one does anymore where that's required I mean, you know she banks online she right. shops online she conducts her life online and so you know going to sort of an analog process from a digital process to an analog process uh, you know it's not part of her day-to-day -day life and so you know everything we can do to make it easy for people I think we have a responsibility to do do you uh, like the vote by mail concept or would you rather go to a poll I love vote by mail uh, when I was when we moved to DC and I became a DC voter and um, I had to go to the polling place and stand in line um, I, I mean it, it seemed very very old school and backwards and uh, and then I worked in a polling place as a poll worker just because I'm an elections geek, geek and can't help myself um, and you know I, I mean I can tell you even using I mean, they had pretty sophisticated equipment in the District of Columbia uh, electronic poll books for example you could people with hyphenated last names you could not find them in the poll book really? it, it, I tried every and the, the, you know we were trained and nobody ever told me this but they're on the ground with a line of people um, you couldn't find people with hyphenated last names you type in their address and they'd pop up but if you try I tried every possible combination hmm. you know exactly what was on their driver's license and it would be voter not found so you know the the one of the sort of unsung things about vote by mail is when mistakes happen and election officials make mistakes uh, I remember when we were in or when I was in Oregon uh, a uh, a small county left their state senate race off of the ballot the guy was unopposed I mean it was not a huge deal but um, they mailed out the ballots and a voter called and said hey uh, my senator's not on the ballot what the heck's going on well it was 18 days before the election they could send out a supplemental ballot you can fix mistakes that happen I mean you don't want to make mistakes but right. mistakes happen and in a polling place environment if it's eight o'clock in the morning on election day and somebody's left off the ballot there aren't a lot of ways to recover from that um, 18 days out 20 days out you have the chance to fix something and uh, and uh, yes be embarrassed but correct an error and um, and make sure it never happens again so getting to some of the, the things in the auditor's office and I put them out as uh, separate uh, questions but they're kind of related top priorities biggest challenges for the auditor's office as you see it so I you know I think in government generally we need to work really hard at restoring people's confidence in government and and there's an elections piece of that which is you know confidence in the electoral process has probably never been lower um, it, regardless of where one is on the political spectrum I mean, people on the far left believe that elections are stolen people on the far right believe that our elections are stolen um, and processes aren't fair and so as election officials we have a big job of restoring people's confidence in the elections process you know I think Washington State does a fantastic job in that we have paper systems we have um, you know, yes they are counted electronically but but you know very few people uh, use a wholly electronic system to vote and and that's good I mean paper is good because you can go back and check and one of the things I want to do is after every election do a post-election audit where you take a statistically significant set of races and a statistically significant set of precincts and you count and you get human beings together and you count the ballots and make sure that what the electronic systems said was the count 
is the actual count. And if there are discrepancies, figure out what the heck's going on. Um, and those, those discrepancies are generally very, very small, but, and they should be, I mean, they should be zero, but you need to figure out what's going on. I mean, why, why a machine counted a ballot incorrectly if that's what happened? And so that's something, I, that's, that's something that's not required in Washington law. In some states it's required by law, but it's something I want to do here just to increase people's confidence in elections. You know, in the financial services side, it's making sure that our bills are paid on time, um, make sure that everything happens on time, that the, the county's credit rating is good, that things are running smoothly, that uh, the, the audit from the state is clean, uh, that you know, everything is, is squeaky clean. On the, the licensing side, it's good customer service. It's, and, and, um, and on uh, titles and, and, uh, and that side, it, you know, it's, it's making sure that our customers are treated well, are happy, um, and feel like they got a value for the fees that they're charged. I, I, from my experiences and the people I talk to in their dealings with the auditor's office, I don't think there's a lot to fix there because everything I've heard is um, you know, from people in the real estate business who deal with the office on a regular basis, they love it. And uh, you know, so I, in fact, I, you know, I, I don't think, I don't come in with a long list of things I want to fix, but I want to make sure that every single day and every single transaction is positive and people feel like they were treated well. Part of the customer service aspect uh, is the hours that the office is open. And I know that's a budgetary issue. Yeah. Um, would you try to fix that? Try to find the money to keep the office open longer? Love to do that. I mean, of course, you know, you want to have hours that work for customers, but um, you know, there are also contractual relationships with employees. And you know, we've here in Mason County gone through almost a decade of doing more with less and more with less and more with less. And at some point that becomes a diminishing return and you just can't expect people to do more with less. And so you know, th that became the compromise that Karen had to get to. Um, I don't think she was particularly happy about it, but you know, it was either losing employees or losing hours. And um, you know, one of the things I wanna focus on is figuring out additional revenue sources for the office, and I have two ideas about that. Uh, one is in nine states, the state pays for either all or a portion of the cost of running state and federal elections. Uh, Washington State, the legislature pays zero. Um, and and that's just not right. Um, you know, the, the, the pockets of the state are a lot deeper than the pockets of Mason County taxpayers. And, um, you know, and I'm gonna spend time going to the legislature and saying, listen, you people are all too happy to give us a laundry list of requirements of exactly the way we're supposed to run elections and exactly how many uh, drop boxes we're supposed to have and, and you know, all these processes. And, you know, and man, it's easy, it's really easy to layer, layer requirements and, um, and processes on people if you don't have to pay for it. Um, you know, all the requirements in the world, sure, uh, if they're free. Uh, Mason County voters, Mason County taxpayers have to pay the price for all these requirements that come from the legislature. Now, I'm not arguing that the requirements are bad. I'm just, requ I'm just saying that the state should be paying for a portion of meeting those requirements. And so that's, that's one. The other is I had a conversation the other day with Mary Hall, who's the auditor in Thurston County. She's becoming a, a agent, uh, a passport agent. Um, so you will be able to go into the Thurston County Auditor's Office and fill out all the paperwork. You have to be certified by the U.S. State Department to be a passport agency, but she she believes she is going to generate enough revenue in her office to pay for three full-time employees at the cost of one full-time employee. Uh, that one full-time employee is going to be able to generate enough money to pay for three. 
it's worth looking at whether it makes sense in Mason County to do that. It would be a service for folks here, and if we can make it pay, um, then I'm all for it. If it's a money loser, no, but you know, I want to take a look at that and see whether there's a way to uh, make that pay for itself, because be it would be a nice service for uh, Mason County citizens. Okay, Patty, I have some other things to talk about. Sure. But you've covered a lot. We, <laughs> I think we're ended at that. Okay. Um, I'm sure we'll see you, hear from you coming up <laughs> till the election. And I thank you for coming in. Thank you. It was, it was, it was, I, I appreciate the chance to sit down.